بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين مولاي صل وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم محمد سيد الكونين والثقلين والفريقين من عرب ومن عجمي ثم الرضا عن أبي بكر وعن عمر وعن علي وعن عثمان ذي الكرم يا ربي بالمصطفى بلغ مقاصدنا واغفر لنا ما مضى يا واسع الكرم مولاي صل وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله most honorable brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You are watching Vuk's Darsi Quran Iftar transmission, and I'm your host, Muhammad Naveed Ashrafi. Inshallah ta'ala, today I will be uh, discussing with you um, Suratun, uh, Suratul Hajj as well as Suratul Nahal, both of the 14th Juz. Uh, the main theme in Suratul Hajj <coughs> is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is mentioning and stipulating the consequences of rejecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's message of believing in Islam, believing in the oneness of God, believing in the Tawheed and the Risalat of his beloved Prophet, the consequences of previous nations such as the nations of Sayyiduna uh, Lut alayhi salam, <coughs> And the dialogue that took place between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the shaitan, why and how the shaitan became the shaitan, as well as in the introductory verses we uh, learn of the Quran al Majid being revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to refute any other uh, claims or misconceptions that existed in the minds of the kuffar. Also towards the end of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comforts and consoles and encourages Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa to remain steadfast and to continue with his worship. In the introductory ayat, Allah azza wa jal says that surely we have revealed inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidhun surely we have sent down the dhikr and dhikr referring to the Quran al Majid because the Quran itself is a form of remembrance, it is a form of dhikr. Wa inna lahu lahafidun, and surely we are its protector. Meaning, the Quran is not from a human being, it is not from an angel, it is not from a jinn or from any other makhluk, it is not concocted by man. It is a revelation sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sent down by him with the angel Jibra'il, and it is being protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one way in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has and is protecting the Quran is through the Huffaz Kiram, those people who have memorized the Quran. So the Arabic language uh, of the Quran, it is preserved in the hearts of even young children. This itself is a miracle of the Quran. So the actual text of the Arabic is being protected. The actual uh, correct meanings of the Quran, the tarjuma, is also being protected with the uh, true um, <coughs> genuine Muslims who have the uh, pristine um, meaning and they have the pristine Islam which is the unchanged, the original Islam. The, the, the Qira'at of the Quran is also being protected by Allah. The meanings are being protected by Allah. The Arabic is being protected by Allah. And the secrets, the rumours that are in the Quran are also protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal then mentions in verse number 26 of Surah Al-Hijr that surely we created the human, the human being out of clay and out of uh, black smelling mud. And before we created the human being, we created the jinns. Jan is plural of jinn and we create, created them from smokeless fire. So jinns have been created be before the creation of human beings. 
and then Allah Azza wa Jal, although the story of um, <clears throat> the shaitan being disobedient, rebellious uh, to Allah Azza wa Jal's command has been mentioned on two or three occasions in the Quran of Majid, but each time the wording has been that has been used is slightly different, although the meaning is the same. This is the, the demonstrates the eloquence of the Quran and how Allah Azza wa Jal, he wants to remind the believers and the non-believers in particular that this is what happens if you become an outcast if you become one who is disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then no matter how close you may have previously been you become the rejected one as the shaitan has been referred to as the rejected the rajim the outcast and Allah Azza wa Jal says that we recall O beloved meaning the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been shown everything that happened previously in the past, Makana wa Mayakun, as the ulama say, he has the knowledge of what has happened in the past and what was what is going to happen in the future. Allah Azza wa Jal has revealed that to him, otherwise it does not make sense. And recall, meaning you only say to someone recall if they knew of the event or if they knew of that uh, situation or predicament that has happened. Or through the Nigahe Nubuwat, through the uh, vision of Nubuwat that Allah has bestowed to him, as he is the first of all creation, he saw and observed everything. He says when when and when your Rabb said to the angels, Inni khalikum basharam min salsali min hama'im masnoon, I am, I am creating a human from clay and from black smelling mud. فَإِذَا سَوَّيْتُهُ وَنَفَقْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ Then when I had informed him and I breathed in him from my special esteemed spirit, meaning that Allah had created that spirit, as Allah is free from having a ruh, from having a jism, a body or, or soul, meaning that the nisbat is that he created that. They all fell down into prostration. All of the angels, all together went into prostration. Illa Iblis, Iblis is the name of the shaitan. He did not prostrate. He <coughs> refused to be amongst the prostrators. He refused that he be among the prostrators, although he was not. He was with the group of angels, according to some tafasir. He was the teacher of the angels previously. And he was a pakka muwahid, meaning one who believed in the oneness of God, in tawheed. So just believing in the tawheed and rejecting nubuwa of the prophets of Allah, rejecting the risalat of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is not going to save a person, as both are required to believe in the oneness of God and in the risalat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And then Allah asks him, <clears throat> this was a rhetorical question, is not as Allah did not know. So sometimes when a question is asked, it is not all, always asked because of the absence of knowledge, because of not knowing. So Allah asked him, Malaka Allah Takuna Ma'asajideen. What happened to you that you were not that you will not you will not be with the prostrators, with those who are Sajideen? He said, Lam akulli astuda li basharin khalaqtahu min Sal Salim min Hama im Masnoon that I was not going to do. I am not going to do, meaning it is not befitting for me that I do sajda, that I prostrate to a human whom you created with uh, clay, black smelling mud. When he said this to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah did not even bother to uh, continue to argue with him or to start an argument with him. Sometimes it is not sufficient. The answer is so uh, baseless that Allah Azza wa Jal did not be fit even responding to this. So Allah Azza wa Jal, he saw his um, uh, anal uh, the analogy. <clears throat> he, if he was an obedient servant, he would have just simply obeyed as the angels did. However, he did not, and he had refused, and he explained what his logic was but this was in the court of Allah you know logic is not going to work nothing is going to work and he rejected uh, his argument and said Fakhruj minha get out from paradise fa'innaka rajim that you are the rejected one undoubtedly and upon you is the la'na is the curse of Allah until the day of reckoning the day of resurrection for anvirni then what did he say? Rabbi for anvirni ila yawmi yub'athun. Oh my Rabb, give me respite. 
give me time until the day of resurrection. Allah Azza wa Jal, He said, Go, fa innaka. Indeed, you are amongst those who have been given time. Go, fa innaka min al mundhareen. Yes, you are going to be among those who have been given the time until the appointed time. Ila yomil waqtil ma'loom. And then He said that, Oath, I swear that. I swear that you, on the one who led me astray, this was again his blasphemy to Allah, that I will decorate for them, I will adorn for them, لهم, the sins on the earth, and I will misguide them all, except for those of your servants, those of your uh, devotees, who have been given ikhlas, who have been given sincerity and Allah says in ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan that this is my path that and it is straight that leads to me qala hadha siratun alayya mustaqim in ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan surely my servants you have no control over them laysa laka alayhim sultan illa man ittaba'aka min al ghawin except for those who will follow you from the misguided then Jahannam is mentioned that it has uh, sab'atu abwab, it has seven doors, seven gates. And then to contrast that, Allah likes to mention paradise. And paradise is it contains gardens and it contains fountains and springs, and that has been prepared, and that is for the muttaqeen, for the righteous people. <clears throat> Allah Azza wa also with reference to the kuffar. He says he takes an oath on the Prophet Sallallahu blessed life. This demonstrates the importance because of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi the importance he has in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal. He says, La Amruka, oath on your life. And Allah has not taken an oath, oath on the life of any creation prior to that, no after this. Meaning since the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's creation, when he says, nuri, that the first creation that Allah created was my light. So oath on your life. So this demonstrates that the entire life of our Nabi وسلم, since the point of his creation until his uh, blessed departure from this world. La amruka, oath on your life. Innahum lafi sakratihim yakmahum. Surely they are in their intoxication, wandering in their misguidance. Innahum lafi sakratihim yakmahum. They are wandering in their intoxication, meaning in their misguidance. So, uh, an oath is taken to demonstrate the uh, one's love for something or for someone. And they say that I express and take an oath on such a thing. But that's, this is not a shari oath. Or it is taken to express the azmat, the prestige, the honor and dignity, the greatness, the magnificence and excellence of something here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is expressing the greatness of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa his prestige his honor is being referred to here that there is no other creation who upon whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken an oath upon and then the punishment given to the the nation of Sayyiduna Lut alayhi salam who rebelled who were disobedient against uh, uh, against him, against the commands that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent via Sayyiduna Lut alayhi salam. They rejected the message. They rejected the invitation to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they chose to follow their evil desires and then they were seized by the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they were pelted with stones for the acts of sodomy for the acts of adultery and sodomy and the unlawful and unnatural relationships uh, that they had established and they were involved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he concludes the verses by saying to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa by consoling him and saying that وَلَقَدْ <clears> نَعْلَمُوا <throat> and surely we know that أَنَّكَ يَضِيكُ صَدْرُكَ that uh, your heart feels as as to what they say. Annaka yadiku sadruka bima yakulun so fasabih bihamdi rabbika continue to do the tasbih and the hamd of your rab and 
be with those who prostrate wa kum minas sajideen wa abud rabbaka and worship your rabb until yaqeen comes to you here yaqeen is referring to maut meaning continue to worship allah and this is a message to all muslims that we should continue to preoccupy ourselves in the worship of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until death overtakes overtakes us stay with us respectable viewers and listeners i will see you after a very short break assalamu alaikum Allahu Akbar